G'day friends, what an exciting time right now. The City Skylines 2 trailer just dropped today and with it, a release date. And guys, we've got a lot to talk about. Now I haven't watched it yet, I'm gonna watch it in just a moment, but I do have a pretty good idea of what to expect because I actually made the city for that trailer. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all the juicy goss, tell you everything there is to know about City Skylines 2, all the tools, all the features. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but I am going to talk about my experience building that city, how I was fortunate enough to even been asked, some of the things that I am really excited about, some things that surprised me. And if you've got any questions, feel free to let me know, hashtag MQ&A, and I'll probably make another video later this week. Also, those leaked screenshots, despite giving me just a little heart attack, did anyone notice the city name down there? New Dollarton? Just a very uncreative name by me. No? No one? Okay. Uh, let's watch that trailer. Oh boy, okay. Wow, we, we really do have a lot to talk about then. I didn't know what was gonna be featured in that trailer, so a lot of good stuff to talk about. We'll break that down in just a second. If you wanna speed past any of the different segments in this video, feel free to use the timestamps. But I do wanna talk about how I was even asked to build this city in the first place, because it's still pretty crazy to me. I still can't believe it. You know, I have done work with Paradox Interactive in the past. I've done stuff for their industry still see and for Sunset Harbor. But when I was asked to do this one, it's pretty next level. I really couldn't believe it. I think I even asked them, are you sure? <laughs> is, is, I, I think I know what you asked me to do, but are you sure? Uh, the entire time I was pinching myself. I think I didn't believe it until I got the game and started working on it. And even then I was still sending them screenshots and saying, is this what you want? Are you sure you want me to do this? Because really, they could choose anyone from the City Skylines community. I mean, there are amazing creators out there. I think I was just lucky enough to be the creator they chose. And I, honestly, I think it comes down to that. I think it's just luck because they could have chosen anyone. And I guess this is probably a good time to mention, but this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to say any of these things. I've actually asked if I can make this video. I got the green light, so we're all good to go. So these will be my opinions, all based on the experience I had playing City Skylines 2 just happens to be something that I am really excited about. So let's break down this trailer and talk about some of those things. Okay, so starting at the beginning, let's talk about roads. So I'm sure you can all tell that roads have been drastically overhauled. I remember when City Skylines 1 first came out and playing around with the road networks and connecting them up and turning off the different tools and raising them up and down and just being very impressed with that sort of mechanics that the game offered. And that was 2015, you know, pretty long time ago now. But I remember feeling the exact same way when playing City Skylines 2, going, okay, so that's that easy now. <laughs> you know, there's some aspects of building intersections and dragging out roads and connecting things up that are very, very intuitive. But not just that, it's also just so much easier to create things that used to take such a long time in City Skylines 1. Now you pretty much just have to snap them together 
and then all of a sudden you've got that thing that I would usually spend sometimes an hour, two hours trying to make. But then you've also got tools that extend all that, make it so that you can now create really complicated things that used to take an entire day to create. If you've ever seen one of my live streams and I've tried to create a roundabout, then you know it takes hours. At least it takes many hours dragging out nodes and connecting this to this and making sure that this flows and then using traffic president mod. And it's all great because these tools we didn't have in 2015, you know, seeing what we can do with City Skylines now with the mods we have. Yeah, we can do a lot. But with City Skylines 2, you have way more tools that allow you to create some of these things just so quickly. Not just quickly, but some of them with just a couple of presses of a button. And I'm thinking City Skylines 1 with mods and assets. But if you're a City Skylines player who doesn't play with mods and assets, if you're playing on console, then creating those detailed intersections or even creating interchanges with roads that overlap and, you know, feel more realistic, that's really hard. Or even a detailed one doesn't really exist. But this is straight out the bat with City Skylines 2. And I love this because it just makes some things so much faster and easier. You don't even think about it. It just happens so quickly and you go, great, that's done. Now I can focus on something else rather than having to work on yet another intersection or another ramp or another roundabout. It's just there. But in saying that, I still definitely felt myself getting sucked into some of these road projects, trying to make the perfect traffic flow, adding in an extra lane or making an extra ramp or changing this or changing that or making it so that it sloped perfectly. I'm going just no, $2, just pull yourself away. No one's going to notice this. It's all about the big city. You've got a deadline to meet. But I guess that's a good sign. It was a lot of fun. You know, I don't always love working with roads and City Skylines 1. I do sometimes, but then other times I do find it a little bit tedious. It's probably one of the more tedious parts about City Skylines 1 is making roads. But I, it's really great seeing the road tools just completely overhauled in this game. And I really can't wait to see what modders do with this because there is just so much room. Like I'm already thinking about some of the things that could be added. Not that it needs to be added, but I'm thinking base game, City Skylines 1 and what modders can do with roads in that game. I want to see what they can do in this one. Not to mention traffic UI is so much better. I think we all expected it, but just seeing it in action, ah, so lovely. All right, that nighttime shot is pretty sweet. I'm gonna talk about the environment at the end because it's probably my favorite part of City Skylines 2. I also just kind of skipped past some of the transportation. We just saw a moment ago, we had a passenger train and a freight train. I think we also saw a tram. I'll talk about that in just a little bit, but man, that shot, lovely. All right, okay, let's talk a little bit about zoning. So zoning does look a bit different in City Skylines 2. You do have a little bit of extra space when it comes to the squares that you have to zone on. Can I just say that that actually makes it a little bit more interesting just because I found myself experimenting with the different types of buildings that I wanted to grow in different areas because you've got more space. I found myself creating larger blocks, but that's not always something you want to do. So I found myself having to change the way that I designed my cities because I was initially trying to make it so that I could have the largest buildings on those areas, but that that's not always what you want. And it means that you've got different types of buildings growing in those spaces, you know, you're not always going to have the same types. So yeah, it's kind of interesting having the larger blocks to work with. And I think it's really fun because I reckon we're going to see some really interesting types of buildings being created for this game. You know, I already really love the different types of buildings that they have in City Skylines 2. I saw that a lot of people were talking about how City Skylines 2 looks a lot more realistic to City Skylines 1 when the leaked screenshots came out. Yeah, it really does. And I'm all about it. I love how much more realistic this looks. I remember when City Skylines 1 first came out, I remember even thinking back then, hey, this looks a bit cartoony. There's certain buildings here. I don't know if I want to see them again. <laughs> just delete them straight away. But they are definitely going for a much more realistic art style. I am all about it. I think this looks so great. I love more realism in this game for sure. I'm all about that.
All right, modular buildings. This is pretty cool, isn't it? I love the fact that you can just change buildings depending on what you need around the area. Obviously, not all buildings are going to be like this, but I think it's super fun that you can just change your building depending on what you need within the area. It obviously depends on the building and depends if you have the upgrade or the money or I'm also interested to see what the modding community can do with this. I assume modders will have access to stuff like this. I have no idea. I have no idea what it takes to create assets within the game, so maybe not. But I assume they can create modular buildings. And if they can, this just changes everything, right? You know, I can't imagine creating an asset in the first place, but making it so that you can modulate it, make it so that it changes depending on what you need. That's pretty nuts. And I assume that that'll be open to asset creators, but I have no idea, maybe not. But it'd be pretty cool if it was. Imagine the sort of stuff that's gonna get created for this game. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of management side of things now. Uh, can I just say that the management side of this game is just so much better. I mean, all this sort of stuff you know, and I can't really go too much into too many of the features and details of some of these things. But all I can say is, for someone who has played a lot of City Skylines 1, I very quickly just sort of stopped really worrying too much about how my city was functioning and just sort of worked on more of how the city looked. But I can very confidently say that this is so overhauled. I was doing so much more management. My city got pretty big. New, New Dollarton got massive, but I was doing a lot of management. I was doing a lot of you know, fixing policies and making sure that we had enough coverage and there's little fine tunings of things that you can just change and just tweak so that your city is functioning just ever so slightly better. You can probably see just some scatterings of public transport around. Yeah, we've got trams straight off. They're great. A lot of the tools are pretty similar to what we are familiar with with City Skylines 1. So I found myself just going, okay, oh, this is like that. Okay, easy. But then there's also some tools that just make it ever so slightly different so that you can build upon it and make things just a little bit easier to drag out or create. Uh, I can't talk too much. All right, let me talk about my all time favorite thing to do with City Skylines 2. It's got nothing to do with the city. It's got nothing to do with tools. It's got nothing to do with roads or zoning or transportation it's actually to do with the environment. And when I say environment, I'm clumping together lighting, weather, day night cycle and seasons. And yeah, seasons. If you're anything like me, then the day night cycle or even when it rains in City Skylines 1, you just kind of turn it off or speed past it. Uh, no, thank you. I'll, I'll build in daylight. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll take a couple of cinematics or a couple of pictures when it rains, but you don't really build in it. Whereas I never turned it off in City Skylines 2. The weather, the day night cycle, it was all just really fun to experience. But it's not even just that, because I always knew that this was always going to be better in City Skylines 2. They're always gonna do nighttime and weather better. But what I wasn't prepared for was just how much that changes the way that you play the game. It means that you are experiencing your city in all these different types of environments. I know I spoke about the day and night cycle and seasons. There's some really big players for the environment, but also just the way that the weather changes. And sometimes it's just so subtle. You know, sometimes you're building and you're like, oh, it's actually raining. I didn't even realize. And then sometimes it's really cloudy. You'd be like, oh, it feels a little bit cloudy today. And then the sun will be right out because it's the summertime and it's bright and it's colorful and then all of a sudden it starts to transition into winter time or autumn and then it just changes the way that your city feels you know these seasons bring different weather and with all these changes with the environment it just makes the city feel so alive really just feels so alive and that's something i try to inject within my cities in city skylines one but it just happens naturally in city skylines two and when all this is progressing through longer days, longer years, with lifespans longer, Sims feeling more real and living in your city, I know they do that in City Skylines 1, but this just feels a little different. So that is my favorite part, the environment. I absolutely love it. I think it's just so fun to experience. 
and I really can't wait for you guys to experience it too. Let me know what you guys are most excited about with City Skylines 2. What have you noticed? Have I not spoken about something that you would love me to cover in the next video? Please let me know. I know I'm being very general with my explanation about some of the features. I can't talk too much about some of the things, but please let me know if you've got any questions and I'll try and do the ones that I'm more likely to be able to answer. In terms of the city itself, New Dollarton, I really want to show more of it to you guys. I'm hoping that I'll be able to at some point. Maybe we'll get featured in other videos. I've got no idea, but it was a lot of fun to create. It was inspired, I don't know if you can tell, but it was inspired by New York, uh, Manhattan in particular. And I think I'll talk a bit more about it in the next video because there's a lot just to talk about the city and what I was doing to create it and the sort of things that I had to embed into it because there's a lot of different aspects of showcasing particular parts of the game, making sure that I set things up for cinematics, make sure it's at a right size. There's a lot to talk about. Maybe I'll talk about that. I'll definitely talk about that in the next video. But if you're regularly here, then you'd know that I've been talking about a job that I've been working on, I've been a bit busy. This is it. I haven't been able to really tell you much, but this is the job. This is what's been taking so long. Uh, also my other job that is also taking a lot of time. So this is why I've been busy. I'm sorry about the lack of videos. This is why. Oh, finally I can tell you guys. This is why I've been working on this. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I look forward to sharing some more info down the track later this week. And a big shout out to some of the newest patrons over on Patreon supporting the channel. Jay Evans III, Tyler Moss, MC, Zach Lakia, John Thompson, and Arthur Kripanov. Cheers guys. Catch you all in the next one. Bye.